Hello Reactor Enthusiasts. This is a new reactor simulator video and this is about the RBMK1000 simulator. If you follow this series of uh, reactor simulator videos, previously I worked on this BWR from ACME, this is a boiling water reactor, and then I did many videos of the WWER1000, which is a Russian designed pressure water reactor. And finally, finally, we jump to the end of this series, which is the RBMK1000. And here we see a scan of the original package, software package that was released around the year 98. And this uh, work for Windows 3.1 or Windows 95, something like that. And uh, this is all the manual that I need to thank the comrade 3DR who scanned this and made it available. He has uh, some tutorials in his uh, YouTube channel. Uh, about using this reactor simulator, but it has no voice over. So I decided to make another tutorial to help people who wants to to make this uh, work, which is not an easy task. So I will also explain you how to make it work because there are some tricks that you need to resolve. Comrade 3 3DR help us to to make this work. So I just. Mm, Compile everything in this video so you have everything together and with voiceover if you want to use this simulator in your computer So first of all, we need to download the software. I will provide the links of this but uh, Comrade 3DR also has uh, these links in his videos I will put a link to this software and also to the video of Comrade 3DR We need to uh, Unpack all the software and put it directly to the root to see the directory. If not, it will give problems. So we put everything in the folder Chernobyl in the root of our computer. Then we will need to patch some files that are also pro provided in the links. It's this file in the zip. We unzip this and we check uh, where in this uh, directory this file appears and we substitute the original by this one. This fixes an IC state that uh, that is wrong in the original package, and then we will need also to use cheat engine to fix a problem with the Shannon poisoning. I will show you now inside the software. Then, if you want to run this in a Windows 10 computer to have the image properly scaled in the screen, you need to go into compatibility, change change height DPI settings and select the two options for RAM DPI, this one, and high DPI scaling override, this one. And we open the software now. Okay, so with these scaling tricks, we have this size of the control panel and we have all these empty spikes here and in the sides, it will, this will be very helpful to put some output results and some many data and things we will need during the the operation of the simulator. Okay, so we will start. First of all, we need to fix the Shannon concentration. I will open some schematics. We will just open all of them. And I like placing them in the bottom. So this is the feed water system, the aerator, steam drum, core status and turbine status status okay and if we look at the reactor the bottom number is the Shannon concentration we have uh, 111.5 and this seems to be a bug because uh, in this kind of reactor we have Shannon poisoning when the power goes below the power it was running in the past because Shannon is created resulting from decay products from the React that took place in the past, but when reaction neutron level goes goes down, the xenon is less destroyed by by the neutron flux, and this number increases. This is called xenon poisoning. In this simulator, it seems even if you reach a power of 100%, in which you should have a lot of xenon destruction or removal of the reactor, this number keeps increasing and it inhibits power. I don't know why this happens. 
It could be because of a unit conversion using the simulator in a metric system instead of imperial system, or it could be some portability problem because of using this in a new window system. I don't know. But uh, Comrade 3DR found a workaround for this with a cheat engine. So we need to install this program, which allows us to modify binary files. We will need to look for the file called chernob underscore 32 point dll plus 23210. I already did before, so it appears. Oh, first of all, we select this task, which is the Chernobyl RBMK reactor unit 3 malfunctions of. We open it. I say yes because I already saved this before. And then we will need to manually input the address that I just told you. I will put this in the comments. Then we select active. And this is the number in binary or hexadecimal. I don't know. That gives this Shannon number. We just fix it to zero. So there is no Shannon. This is not very realistic, but we will just run the simulator like this. Believe me, it's difficult enough to run this simulator even with this at zero. Okay, we can already minimize cheat engine. And now we will start the procedure of startup of this uh, nuclear power plant. I will now set my, my watch stop clock now to see how long it takes to bring this up to nominal power. Okay, let's start. First of all, we have this organization here, starting from the upper left corner, we have the reactor and the rod control. And we, if we go down, we get farther from the reactor. So we have the loop one and loop two, re recirculation pumps, emergency core, cooling systems, etc. Turbine here, um, mine steam dump control, and then we already get into the secondary circuits and with the, into the water treatment pumps, which this is the natural water in a lake or in a river nearby the plants that will cool down the the water in the condenser after the turbine and then we here we have the condensate con condensate system which are the pumps that treat the water that have been con condensated in the condensator after the turbine okay first of all we check that the reactor level and the hot water level are fine we see they are fine they are stable here at zero Mm, this is the range in this scale in the trend chart from minus 15 it would be the bottom to plus, plus 15 would be the maximum level so everything is stable we can already start uh, we'll start turning on the pumps the water treatment pumps pump one and pump two and open the valves this will keep the level in the reactor at what should be if for any reason there is more evaporation or whatever. Then we go to the condensate system. We switch on one of the pumps and set the deaerator level into auto. And the set point is at zero. So this is good. So the auto will make the flow in or out uh, accordingly to keep this level at set point at zero. We can start the polisher which is the system that cleans the water or treats it chem chemically to have the good ion concentration and everything. And then we continue with the offline cooling system. We can already stop the cooling. This is the cooling that is uh, started when the reactor shuts down because the reactor will continue producing heat for several hours of, or days after the and they shut down because of decay products we need to keep it cooling with diesel systems or electric motors connected to the grid so we just turn off all this we keep the inlet valve open but we close the outlet valve okay when it lights green it means it's off and we connect the diesel pumps for emergency cooling in case it's needed this would start reactor drain control we can set the set point at four okay and auto this will keep
keep the reactor level stable. Condensor vacuum system. Okay, we will set the air ejector into on, but this will not light until the pressure reaches a threshold. I will look at this later, and this is closed, this is good, the condenser vacuum breaker must be closed. We can already close the feed pumps, and all this is fine, the condenser system is fine. And now we continue, the hot well is good, it's into auto, and the set point is zero. The deaerator system, we set it into auto, and we need to open the deaerator vent valve more or less to 50%. You cannot just keep the mouse clicked, you need to keep clicking all the time to make this increase. I will go to 20 and later I will keep increasing to 50. Okay. And I will start the loop 1 and loop 2, and this will make the temperature in the reactor start increasing. What's the procedure here? First of all, we open the inlet valve, and we see this percentage going up. We need to do this in the two loops, first loop and second loop. And once they open, the inlet valve is at 100%, we can turn on the valve. And when these lights, these on button lights, we can open the outlet valve. And we see this outlet valve opening now. And the same for the loop 2. For the startup pressure procedure, we only need one of the valves of each loop on. When we bring up to, to power after connecting the turbine, we will need the three valves on. Sorry, the three pumps in each loop. So let's check it. We have the flow meter here and here. They are slightly different. We could trim them to be exactly equal, but the difference is small, so it's fine. And now we can have a look into the plant overview schematic. We have one of the three, we see here in the middle of the reactor, the three pumps in each loop. The red one is the one that it's on. This is, in the bottom is, what's this? Water treatment. Yeah, these are the water treatment pumps. And oh, I forgot to connect these two here. Condensator. This and this. Condensor circulating water pumps. So these two pumps are the two pumping water from a lake or river or sea or whatever to go to the condenser just after the turbine here. And now I think everything is good. We, now we need to wait for the reactor to go up to temperature, start heating the water in the drum, in this diagram here. And when the water in the drum reaches 100 degrees Celsius, it will start boiling and it will start increasing the pressure in the drum that is connected to the main pipeline here that goes to the turbine. So next thing to do is to look at the main steam dam control. This is the system that will control the pressure in the drum. This is very important because I saw many people, and I include myself into this group of people, had many problems with the disc, disc uh, rupture, disc rupture trouble. This is a problem that comes during the simulation, and no one know, knows why. Comrade 3 dr 3 dr told some people it may be because the IC problem that must be patched before running the simulation, but I think this is not the IC problem. This is because of forgetting to to increase the set point of the mine steam dam control at the beginning of the simulation. If we keep this too low, the set point, it will open the valve before it's it should be open and this will create the this rupture problem and when this happens we we can just stop the simulation because there is no way we will connect the turbine if there is a disc rupture problem. I will just advance something but I will go into this later. At some point of the simulation what is the condensate vacuum? Here. The condensate vacuum which is indicated here in the right in uh, yellow 
needs to create uh, enough pressure for this condensate condensator air ejector to turn on. When this is on, then we can open the valve to release pressure in the drum. If we open this valve before the time, the, when this is on, it will create the, this um, rupture. So we need to increase this at point. I will increase it up to 4000. This will be enough. So we will have the time to create enough vacuum in the condensator vacuum system before this reaches the set point. And then we will be able to continue increasing heat and open the main steam dam control valve. So just in case I will increase to 5000, but we will go in to check this later. And this in auto, the deaerator, I will keep increasing this a bit more to 30 now. And now everything looks fine and I will go to the reactor. This is the absorber rod control and fuel monitoring system. How do we start with this? First of all, for security reasons, we need to start with drawing the center core only rod. So we need to select this. And uh, we have these three cells here, we can select slow, medium or fast. So the safest thing to do is to select slow and start pulling rods. This is not like the WWER simulation simulator in which you need to keep press the button to pull rods. You just click here and rods are being pulled out. And we see in this number here, 53%. No, sorry, this is the 97%. These are the rods that, that are being pulled out of the reactor. We see 100% means rods totally inserted and in this inner frame, that's why we selected the center core only. These are the rods that we are withdrawing now. And when, if we look at the neutron rate, which is the increase or decrease of neutron activity or neutron flux in the core of the reactor, we see this this white line that is slightly increasing now because it's really really slow i will just go too fast and when we okay and we see a jump now we have in this reactor power regulation this indication neutron rate two percent and we have to keep this below eight percent otherwise we'll have an alarm and we could even have an scram if we go further so this is slowly increasing. Let's just keep an eye on this. And now I will open the alarm panel. We have a lot of blinking here. Our knowledge. And suddenly many disappear because we already did many things during this time. And we see the neutron rate going to 4%. 5. I will go down to medium when it reaches 6 or 7 and then to slow. Ok, it's in 7 now, let's go to medium, we see this going down just a bit. So I go to slow now and we see the alarm, neutron flux rate higher than 8%. So when it goes to 8 again I will just hold, it means holding all the rods at the position they are now. And I will wait for this to stabilize a bit. Acknowledge. And this reactor has a very convenient feature, which is the automatic power control, which we can reactivate at uh, low powers. And we can just bring the reactor up to power using the automatic control. We don't need to pull rods manually, like we did in the WW. ER. So first of all, I switch on the auto scram control. It means if now I do some stupid thing, we will have a scram. The reactor will shut down automatically. I switch on the automatic reactor control here. And we have here the power set point, which is at 2% now. I will continue pulling rods just with using the center. Okay, it goes up to 8% very quickly. 
so we need to hold it. The neutron flux is at 1% and the automatic control cannot work just with the center core. I need to switch back to the full core. I will do it now, disactivating the center core. And at this moment, the automatic control is not yet activated, but once I start pulling, like now, now it is activated. It should be. So I will try to increase that point to see how it reacts. No, it seems not to be activated. Why is it? I will just keep pulling rods manually. Maybe I miss something. Here everything is fine. The two loops are pumping. Okay. Here <laughs> I forgot this. The feed water pumps and system need to be on. So we check the inlet valve open, the same for the loop one and loop two. One, once it's at 100%, we turn on the pump number one, which is this one. The number one is on display because there is some displaying problem because of the scaling. But this is the one, and now it's on, we switch on the discharge valve. And everything, it, everything else is okay. We are in a one element control. We see the three element is not lined up and we are in the start up valve. Let's see. Okay, the automatic control is not yet working. I will keep pulling rods manually in the slow rate. I don't know what's the problem. It lets me to reduce power, but not to increase. So clearly, there is something I'm missing. The condensate system is fine. This is fine. Offline core cooling is all off. Diesel pump is in auto. Reactor drain control is in auto, and the set point is at four. The condenser circulating water, it's on. I just check this. This is fine. The hot water level, it's fine. Okay, it may be the turbine trip. Okay. So it seems to increase the power above 2%. We need the turbine to be on turning gear. So I will reset the turbine because it's in trip. And it seems I need to go into the turbine support systems and turn on the loop oil, lubricating oil, the hydraulic, and open steam drain. And now I can reset the turbine. Is it? Yes, it reset. We see this light turning on here and then we can switch on the turning gear. Now it's off, and we see the speed set point increasing now, here, and when it's 20, we can go back to the turbine support systems, and start the steam seal, 18, 19, and 20, we can start the steam seal, okay. If we're in a real plant, all these procedures need some operator to check everything is okay. Like you switch on, you start the lubricating oil and you need to send some operator to the turbine to see that there are no oil leaks, everything is fine, the pressures are fine, and when he's back, you can go to the hydraulic and so on. Okay, and we have here the alarm saying that the turning gear is engaged. And let's see now if we can go to the automatic control of the reactor. Yes. And now what we will do is to go to 5% power. And we see here the white line, which is the neutron rate going up. 
and the neutron flux slowly going to 5%. And now that we have all this, we see that the water temperature is 123 degrees, the pressure starting to increase in the steam, we have 139, and I'm, I'm not sure about the units, I would say this bar, because we are in metric system, my computer is configured to be in metric system, but this software is made in US, so this was done to work in imperial system. This has been very difficult for me to reach the nominal power of the simulator because of the unit system. All the manual is written in PSI and imperial units, and this is not displayed in imperial units, and it's not written what unit is it, so that's the thing that gave me the most difficulty. Okay, so now we just need to wait to, to reach the temperature and pressure in the steam line. So we can continue with the startup procedure. We need to reach a pressure of 8,000 and a temperature of... I'm not sure about the temperature, but I think it must be around 200 degrees. So to accomplish this, I will increase the power of the reactor, so we will create steam much faster. We'll go to 10% for the moment. You should not increase the power set point too fast, because it could happen that the neutron rate goes above 8% and you create a scram. So this automatic control is very handy, but you need to, to increase it slowly. Okay, so now we are waiting for the the this we are waiting for the condenser vacuum increase so now it's at zero and then it should increase to 100 kilopascals to the maximum value and then the condenser air ejector will turn on and then we can already start operating the main steam dam control in a normal way for the moment we cannot open this valve here which is at zero percent it should remain at zero percent until we reach this condenser vacuum and now we can increase the the aerator vent valve to 50 percent okay and we got an alarm high the aerator pressure here and I think it's because I didn't increase the deaerator vent valve to 50% before I should have done this it was a bit risky to increase the power to 10% without doing this and we see in the trends now the critical moment in which condenser vacuum increases and we will reach more or less this area here and at that point we can already increase more power to bring the pressure up in the drum. We're at 22 minutes of simulation since I started the restart of the reactor. Okay. This looks fine. As you can see, the condenser air ejector turned on now. And I didn't talk about the EPA filters, but this treat the air that comes from this deaerator vent valve. So the more we open this valve, or the more this value of flow appears here, the more these EPA filters will need to work. They are in the correct setting, so I didn't talk about them, but the HEPA filter needs to be in and the bypass flow closed. Okay. Now we see the pressure in the drum at 2000. It needs to go to 8000. And we see the temperature in the steam very low. Basically because the valve is at 0%. Because now we want to increase pressure. There is no steam flow. And because there is no steam flow, the 
temperature is very low because the temperature from the drum is not going through the pipes. The normal procedure now is to keep the power at 10% or even at 5% would be maybe a more orthodox procedure. But because I want to speed up a bit the process, I will just increase it a bit. But this may not be the good way to do things. Okay, 13%. We also need to keep an eye into the maximum fuel temperature. We have 402 degrees now. The maximum mm, fuel pellets temperature. This is not an operation standard, this is a design standard. The fuel pellets can withstand a temperature of 2100 degrees Celsius. But the fuel elements, which are assemblies of pellets inside zirconium pipes, inside as an assembly, the, this assembly cannot surpass 600. So we should look at this and try not to go above 600 degrees. We have a higher hot well level, this green line. I think this is because of the increase of power that I just applied and we are just with one feed water pump everywhere. So it's having a bit hard time to equalize the levels and everything, but it must be fine. Okay, I ah, know I, I understand why this happens. This is because of the main steam dam control open the valve here. So now it's time. Now it's time to increase the set point to reach 8000. It's good that the valve open because this helps to, to increase temperature into the main steam line. But uh, but this is a bit dangerous situation, which I got a very low reactor level. So now I will just keep increasing the set point to compensate for these reactor level fluctuations. Here it says low main steam temperature. I'm not sure this is correct because in the previous simulations this message disappears when I go above 8000 in the pressure in the drum. So it's not really the temperature, it's the pressure. That's my opinion. I even reached 330 degrees in the temperature in the main steam and this was still shown here. Okay, we're at 6000. Let's increase step by step to avoid perturbation, perturbating too much the whole well level and the reactor level. And meanwhile, keep an eye to the temperature of the steam line and the pressure of the drum. When we reach 8000 8, in the drum, we'll be able to connect the turbine. We're at a set point of 7000. And I will go into manual now, I like more. So I'm able to operate the valve instead of operating the set point. And I need to close the valve to increase pressure set point. Sorry, pressure, actual pressure in the drum. And actually doing nothing, we see how the pressure in the drum increases. Now maybe it's the moment to decrease the power of the reactor to 10%. This will be an appropriate value to, to connect the turbine. Okay, 10% is good. And we see the pressure almost at 8,000 and we see... Okay, the message disappeared, it means we are already at the good pressure. It must be 7,500, not 8,000 as I said before. So I will increase the set point to to 8000 and set it into auto. And we see the valve opening now. Actually opening a lot. 
sorry, I mean closing. And I will wait a bit for everything to stabilize and then I will go into the turbine. Okay, I still have the long mainstream message, sorry, I didn't realize about that. So probably this will disappear now. Exactly, it disappeared now that we surpass 7500 of pressure. And now when the reactor level and hot well level stabilize a bit, I will connect the turbine. Okay, we are at 20 minutes of simulation and we're going to connect the turbine now. I think we are in a good, very good timing. Sorry, I just closed this, but I didn't need to close it. Okay, so the turbine can be connected using the auto setting or the manual. The auto just cycles through the mm, turning speeds, 900, 1800, 2700 and 3600. And we could just open and close the the valve, the turbine valve manually, but I'm not really sure of doing this manually or auto. I did both in the past. Maybe I will go for the auto one now. So I will just select auto, click this arrow and click open and click the start up valve this all the parameters are good so the speed indicated here shooting start increasing maybe click the 900 yes now we see the speed increasing we are at medium velocity this slow medium or fast should be selected depending on how long time the reactor has been shut down because the turbine will cool down during a shutdown. If it has been shut down for less than... Let me check my notes. The thresholds are like two days, one day and a few hours. So if it has been shut down for more than... I'm not really sure about these values, but let's say more than 48 hours, we need to increase the speed at a slow pace if it has been between one day and two days medium and it, it has been shut down for less than 24 hours we can go into the fast setting why is this if we look at this diagram here turbine status we see the rotor in the center which is the part that is rotating and the shell or the stator if we are talking about electric engines but no there is a turbine so the shell we will see that the rotor temperature increases more fast than the shell temperature this creates a differential expansion of the material because material expands with, with temperature if they do not increase temperature in an equal way or in a synchronized way it means the rotor will expand faster than the shell and this can make the rotor even touch the blades of the shell and destroy itself this also creates a vibration, which we see here in this percentage. And here we see the differential expansion. If the vibration is too high, we risk to break the turbine. Actually, the turbine will shut down before breaking itself. But if this happens, we'll need to go back and lose a lot of time in the startup procedure. So we'll, we don't want this to happen. So what we need to do is to go step by step of the velocity, I mean, 900, 1800, etc. Check vibration and differential expansion. And if everything is low, we can go to the next step. If not, we'll need to wait until everything stabilizes. Now we see the shell temperature, it's 31 degrees and the rotor 33, while the main steam is at 86 degrees. Why this difference? This is because we are spinning up the turbine very few flow is entering the turbine. We see the steam flow here is 2. So because of very low value, actually very few temperature from the steam is transmitted to the rotor and to the shell. Okay, we reach, we reach 900 RPMs. The vibration is very low. 
So we just select the next step. In my experience, the highest vibra vibration will appear between 900 and 1800 RPMs. When you are in high RPMs, the resonant frequency are left behind and you don't have much vibration. We see that the steam flow increase as we selected the new speed rotation. The higher the speed, the more flow it will need to keep this speed, so this is normal. And I will increase just a bit the set point. When we connect the generator, we will need to increase a lot the set point. We will need a pressure above, let's say, 10,000 or 12,000. And we will also need to connect many other things that I will explain later. Now we are ju just waiting for the speed to reach the next step and so on until we reach 3600 RPMs. We will keep the reactor at this power, 10%, during all the acceleration of the turbine and also the grid connection. Once it is connected to the grid and the generator is producing electricity, we will increase the power to 15%. And to, to go above 80 megawatt in the generated load, we need to switch on several systems, which are the three feed, feed water pumps, the main valve, um, the main valve also in the feed water pump system. The turbine control should be switched into main here, the valve select. And we need to close the drains in the turbine support here. The drains here. But we'll do all this later. If you ever by mistake select the main valve in the turbine while spinning up, while ac accelerating the turbine, you will get a lot of vibration because this is a big valve, mm, this is meant to be used during operation and the opening and closing of this valve to maintain the RPMs during the speed up of the turbine will likely create a lot of shock waves in the steam and this is what was creating the, these very big vibrations. I will have a look into the schematic and everything looks fine. Everything looks perfect. The, this power plant is going very smoothly. I'm confident we will reach nominal power. Okay, and we reach 1600. Okay, no, it's 18, 1800. So, not yet the next set point. And I will keep increasing set point in the main steam damp control. A bit more and when the reactor level stabilizes a bit I will 
go up to 10,000. You can see that the valve is at 0% now. Struggling to get to this pressure. I go to 10,000 now and I will leave it like this. Later when the turbine is on grid, I will increase by 20%. Now we have a very low temperature of the main steam line. This is not good. We should try to keep the temperature at 100 degrees. But this is just momentary situation because I just increased the set point. Now we see now going to 150 degrees. Okay, we're at the 1800. Next set point, since the vibrations are low, just 31%. 2700. We also see the differential expansion just in the middle between the two red lines. Too low is not good. It means the rotor is too cold with respect to the shell and too high, it's too hot with respect to the shell. Now it's just fine. We see the shell temperature at 93 degrees and the rotor at 103 degrees. While the temperature in the inlet is 124 degrees. We see 103 in the main steam line. And we see the reactor level struggling to keep... I'm, I'm tempted to connect more feed water pumps to alleviate these oscillations. Yes, let's do it now. Anyway, we have to do it later and we are just waiting for the steam turbine. Drum level control. So first of all, we switch on the three pumps in the feed water pump and systems. We need to open the inlet valves. When they are 100%, we can switch on the pumps. Okay, all at 100%, we switch on the pumps, and once they are on, we open the discharge valves. Okay, open number two and number three. Now we can switch to three elements in the drum level control. This will be needed when we go above 80 megawatt of produced power in the generator. And then we go to the main valve we leave this into auto. Set point zero and everything else is fine. The fuel temperature is around 450. We can increase a bit reactor power now. Just anticipating for the next steps not above 15 percent let's leave it at 40 and we see the fuel temperature increasing to 500 degrees i remind you maximum temperature in the fuel assembly is 600 so we are just 140 below if it was approaching 600 we need to turn on uh, pumps in the loops in the loop one and the loop two of recirculation We see the valve opened in the main steam dump control. So we can just increase a bit more. The set point. And now, now we are almost at the pressure needed to run the generator. We had 42 minutes of simulation and the turbine is almost up to speed, ready to be synchronized with the grid. Once we reach uh, 3600, then we'll need to use this generator brake, which is open now, and we need to close right at the correct moment. When we connect this, the scope, oscilloscope, we'll have this arrow turning. This is the the difference between the grid position and our mm, generator. When this is very close to the top dead center, but a bit to the left, so just before it arrives to the top dead center, then we'll click close and 
luckily this will be synchronized to the grid and it will be producing electricity if we don't we are not in precise enough and we click too early or too late this will pro produce a turbine trip the turbine will just disconnect from the main steam dump the valve control signal will close the valve and we'll need to start again speeding up the turbine we don't want this we're almost at 2700 and the vibrations we see it's very low it's even lower than when we were at 1800 the differential expansion expansion is optimal the temperatures of the shell and the rotor are almost equal so we can i think we don't need to wait for anything to stabilize we can just continue i select the last step 3600 rpms and the steam flow increased to 11 if you remember when we were starting it was at 2 so the faster the speed the more energy we need to keep this spinning because of the friction in the axis and eventually in the fluid flow so we see this increasing at 11.5 now we see the Shannon concentration of zero because I remind you we are using cheat engine to keep this at zero this is not realistic but believe me this is enough like that it took me a long time to to bring this up to to nominal power compared to the BWR simulator which following the tutorial is very straightforward you don't really have any problems to to operate that reactor and then the WWER which is not more difficult simulator but of course more complex than the BWR because it has many screens it, you don't only control the let's say the homogenized reactor value but you control actually every single foil element and there are many things to control in the plant like the decay imbalance and boron concentration etc so it's a complex model but it's not difficult to follow and uh, it took me just few days to to reach nominal power with that reactor without creating a scrum this is very tricky not only because of the physics and neutronics of this reactor but because the simulator is old the portability to new windows platforms creates a lot of problems the unit conversion makes very difficult to follow the manual the manual for instance says that we need 650 psi here etc but the the numbers shown here are not the ones shown in the manual so it's overall quite difficult to follow but i hope this um, tutorial i'm doing now it's helpful and all of you can reach nominal power okay so we are 3100 rpms once we are synchronized with the grid the only thing we'll need is to turn on the loop 1 and loop 2 pumps switch to main valve here in the turbine instead of the startup valve and then increase power using this automatic reactor control up to 100% of neutron flux everything looks okay in the plant schematic just to save some time I will start the loop 1 and 2 pumps so I remind you we just had one pump from the beginning because below 15% reactor power only one pump is needed now we had four, 470 degrees in the foil assemblies we cannot go above 600 degrees and very soon we will need to increase power so I will just do it now so once we are synchronized to a grid we are ready with all the settings to increase power
first we open inlet valve once they are open at 100% we can switch on the pump for loop 1 and loop 2 loop 2 and once the pumps are on we open the outlet valve this to avoid cavitation in the pump in the pump wings or flaps okay so everything is good now I will check in the chart we see here everything in red here everything in red and the condensate pumps it's the only thing missing I will switch on the pump 2 and the pump 3 ok everything is good now and we are at, we just reached 3600 now it's the moment of truth I will turn on the scope and we see this arrow rotating now we have to be ready to close the generator brake if we follow the arrow we sh just here when we are like at 5 minutes before 12 ok so I will get ready and it's closed it's synchronized we have the generator load at 0 0.3 ok I was nervous because if this fails like everything fails <laughs> and we have to start over now because I during the spin up of the turbine I just mm, switch on all the pumps that we need in the feed water pump system in everywhere in the loop 1 and loop 2 etc there is only one thing missing which is a turbine support systems we need to close the drains the steam drains so we'll close this oh no oh no what happened let's go back to manual quickly I just created turbine scrum let's see if I can go back to the nominal speed and set it into auto We're using the manual setting. Okay, and we must be slow here to avoid overshooting it. When it's at 3590, I will close it now. No, it didn't. Let's try again. No, it doesn't. Maybe it needs, it needs more power in the reactor because the reactor went down to 2% automatically after the turbine trip. I will increase to 10% and I will try again. Okay, now it's holding at 3600. Oh, luckily. Okay, let's check all the parameters. 
the steam flow looks fine it's at 12 and I will need to synchronize again So I thought I was supposed to close the drain, but when I close the drain there was a trip, so <laughs> don't close the drain. <laughs> I will check later why this happened. Okay, we'll try to synchronize now. I will wait for the next loop of the scope. Three, two. Okay, it synchronized perfectly. The load is at zero three percent. And now I will switch to the main valve and the load is at 5% and I think now it's the moment when you should you should close the steam drain let me check my notes to make sure I will increase reactor power to 15% Sixteen is fine, and now I will close the drain. Okay, perfect, perfect. Now we don't have a trip. We have a generated load of fourteen megawatt and all the systems of the power plant are in the correct setting to keep increasing power we see this oscillation in the reactor level this because we switch on the main valve in the turbine which is a quite beefy valve and just to keep this generator load it just switches on and off Now I will see if I can increase the generating generator load just increasing the automatic reactor control. You should do this slowly and check all the levels, all the temperatures, all the systems while you do. In particular the fuel temperature, pressure in the drum, etc. I will go up to 30% and then increase the main steam dam control pressure. Okay, let's increase one notch to 11,000. The vibration of the turbine is fine. If you realize when we had the turbine trip, the vibration went up like a lot. This was very dangerous. If I didn't manage to bring it up to to the auto setting very quickly, we could have ended with a with a rupture or something. I will increase the power set point of the reactor to 40 now. Okay, let's go to 50 because everything looks quite stable. Okay, we've got a high differential expansion. I need to go low, lower now. I didn't pay attention to that and this is not good. This is because the steam temperature is too high and this happened because I increased the set point in the main steam dam control which I will reverse now. I will go low to decrease the pressure in the main steam. Vibration is above 100%, now it goes below, perfect. And the differential it's becoming lower okay that's good that's the danger of increasing the power too fast
So I will I will just in keep this at point because increasing reactor power will increase the temperature of the main steam line. Okay, now it's in a safer value. I will go back to 50% of reactor power. And the vibration keeps going lower and lower, so I can go to 60%. We see the shell temperature 230, rotor temperature 250. Just 20 degrees difference. Maybe we could increase the set point a bit, but I don't feel very confident with that temperature of 600. Okay, and we got a foil element temperature of 670. This is very high. The foil assembly temperature is supposed to be kept below 600. Okay, if I don't have any alarm, let's assume it's okay. We keep increasing reactor power now to 70%. And now I will just increase the set point a bit. Things look stable, vibration doesn't go higher. Differential expansion is increasing. Steam is at 740 degrees but stabilized. Okay, we can increase reactor power to 80%. And we see the generating electric power is 700 megawatts. The differential expansion is a bit high now. We are at 30 degrees difference between rotor and shell. Very hot steam at 800 degrees. I will increase that point a bit more. Things look quite stable, just 20 degrees difference between rotor and shell. Let's keep increasing power. Let's go to 90%. Okay, we are at 90% of the RBMK1000 simulator. Ninety percent of the power set point, neutron power. Twenty degrees of delta in the rotor shell temperature. The vibrations and differential expansions are fine. Forty-six percent vibration. Generating load is almost 800 and I will increase a bit more the set point. We are just at one notch from the maximum which is 12,500. Uh, 12, now I will increase the power to 95%. Let's approach carefully to 100%.
The foil temperature is at 800 degrees. This makes me worried, but at the same time we don't have any alarm. So maybe this is monitoring the pellets instead of the foil assemblies. If that's the case, it's totally fine because the pellet can reach 2100 degrees. And probably this is the case because we are in a very normal situation. So I don't think we surpass by that much the design temperature of the foil elements. And we are at 860 megawatts. Let's increase to 98% of neutron power. Okay, I just went to 99. Let's be very careful here. And we see the main steam dam control is at 0%, the valve. This means that we are close to nominal values of pressure. Actually, what is controlling now the drum pressure is the main valve of the turbine, which governs this valve to keep the nominal power, to keep the speed at the 3600 RPMs. So we can just increase to the maximum, which is, sorry, I said 12,500 is 13,500, the maximum set point. This at the maximum. Now the valve will release steam pressure if it reaches this value, but likely it will not happen because we are quite below this value at 10,000 regulated by the turbine needs. And now I will just increase to 99.5. Reactor neutron flux. We are very, very close to nominal. Let's check all the parameters. We see that the thermal power is at 94%. Even if the neutron flux is 99, thermal power is not at 100%. Why? I think it's because of the delayed heat created by decay products. So if we run this reactor for several hours, it, the thermal power should equal the neutron flux because the decay products that are created now will release the heat few hours or even days later. That's why after shooting down one reactor, it keeps heating a lot during days. For instance, the Fukushima reactor that was not cooled after the accident and even if it was shut down, it was heating and heating up during days after. It could also be because the remaining fuel is at 82%. No, I don't think so. I think it's because of the decay products, delayed thermal production. So everything looks fine to me. All the trends are super stable. The pressure in the drum is 10,000 below the set point in the main steam dam control. The turbine is spinning at 36,000 RPM and the generator is on grid and we are just at half percent of the nominal neutron flux. Let's do it. Let's go to nominal neutron flux. We are at nominal neutron flux. 